Hi, and welcome to On the Spot. My name is Ronnie Wiley. To my left is a lady that probably needs no introduction. She ran for mayor uh, since the last time. We, you ran, you did all kinds of stuff. Holly Dunn, welcome to Thanks. On the Spot. Oh, my God. You were the very first guest of On the Spot. I mentioned this before. You, Compton, uh, Russ Amerman, and a few others were kind of inspirations for the show, but we got you first. Finally got you back. Well, I'm so glad to be back. So in the three years, uh, the three years that, uh, that you uh, have not been on the show, lots of things happened. Touched on running for mayor. But let's uh, give us an update. You're, you're, you're the closest to your heart, the Haven. The Haven. Yeah, I forget where we left off three years ago, but lots of things have happened with the Haven since then. Tell us all about it. All right. Well, probably some of the biggest things that's changed is we've moved again. You've moved, yes. So we were on 7th Street, mm -hmm. and now we're up at the Frazee Center. Right. And I... <laughs> love that right. we've basically um, with that transition now have both upstairs and downstairs and we're able to do more programming than even before right. and uh, as a result of that we've our focus as a board has become transitioning into a, a whole like a whole community center awesome. awesome and so for example like Megan and Gabe Nobby will be doing mm -hmm. financial peace with Dave Ramsey oh good this is the third good. time they've been able to run that good. at the yeah. Haven I, I believe they're starting next week so oh, it's still half time to join that class yeah. on Mondays. And then we're partnering back with the schools and having kids after school on both Tuesdays and Thursdays. We still, the biggest thing that most people know us for is fuel. Right, fuel. And, and that's every single Friday night from 9 to midnight. And then the thing that's different is now we are able to still, we want it to be a community center. We want people to still be able to rent the building. So on Saturdays and Sundays primarily, we rent the building out. And uh, it helps to, for us to be sustainable. Right. So, right, right. for example, I mean, <clears throat> our electric alone is $700. Oh, wow. And so if oh. we can rent it on the weekends, then it helps a nonprofit have stability. And so right. that's, that's great. And then downstairs, we have... Yeah, um, lots of downstairs. Yeah, we've got some other stuff happening downstairs. Unchained Praises mm -hmm. does free drug alcohol counseling on Mondays and Fridays down there. Yeah. They have staff that's in the building more often than that. Oh, wow. Thursday evenings we have a, a young adult Bible study that Joe Daniels oh, yeah. leads. Yeah. And then my, I actually for the first time since I left the school, I have an office. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice because I can operate out of. Decompress too. Yeah, I can, I have, so I have space. Yeah. It's a great place for us to, you know, have games and we have a you know, pool table, ping pong table and, Kids can come down there and play. So. And, and be kids. Yeah, and be kids. I, I, I'm not sure if we, we talked about this uh, three years ago when you were on the show, but uh, let's go way back. Okay. Let's go back to the beginning of the <clears throat> idea of fuel, because that basically is where everything kind of spawned from that yeah. for you uh, in this community. Uh, we went to college together. We were in college together. I U East, and you went to Denver, and you came back here, and I was so happy. It's like, Holly's here. I love you. Um, so let's go back to fuel. I'm sure you never imagined back then what no. it would be now. But how did that start? What, what was the idea? Obviously, we know it's Jesus, but talk about the seed being planted in you to, to start fuel. You know, I, I've, t I've shared this story a lot uh, to people. Just It hasn't really changed. We were a part of a church plant and mm -hmm. had some young, young adults and, like, actually a senior in high school, mm -hmm. that wanted something to do. I said, well, you know, we did this thing in Colorado called Fuel. <laughs> and I, it was a really great opportunity for us to worship and really pray and then hang out. And so that's kind of how the thought of it started. Yeah. Meanwhile, I, I worked at the high school, and I had a young man come in that was homeless and had quite the story. And mm -hmm. so we invited him to join us. And then... The next thing you know, on that very first Friday night, he showed up with 12 friends that were all kids that were kind of running the street, didn't mm -hmm. have a whole lot of extra support. Mm -hmm. and, and before you knew it, this like perfect storm happened. And, awesome. and as a result, fuel emerged, not quite like we originally had planned, not right. quite this like super churchy thing, right. but more of a community outreach thing. Right. And they came hungry. They came with life stories that really shocked a lot of people. Yeah. And so that's how Fuel really started. A, a, a couple kids that wanted to do something on Friday night, a homeless kid, and next thing you know, we've got a community ministry that has been going now for, we're coming up on our eight years. You, that's fabulous. I mean, so, that, 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 that is truly God. Uh, we, we know that for sure. You talk about the community aspect of all. When, when, when you think of Fuel, you think of the Haven, you think of, of kids, but now you're expanding more for everyone. families to everyone. Talk about that. Okay. So... 
and I want to talk about my day job because absolutely, that's, we'll get with that too. Yeah, everything. It this merges. This is the whole thing done on the spot. Talk whatever you want. Well, it merges because I, my day job is is drug alcohol prevention. Mm -hmm. and, and where is that at? <clears throat> well, it's a grant, okay. and we call ourselves Communities That Care, mm -hmm. and essentially we do uh, drug, alcohol, substance abuse prevention in the schools, awesome. and we really partner. People know it as Afternoons Rock. Um, Sheriff Joey. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, yeah. he and um, several officers goes into yeah. schools this year. We're in third grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh, awesome. and eighth. So here's, here's another aspect of the Haven is because of our location, we're now able to offer additional substance prevention programs right. paired with, like, life skills yeah. at the Haven on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Of course, it, it, it aligns because it matches my, like, ministry heart right. that not one would, would not, I'm, I'm going to start over and say that better, that we all of our youth right, exactly, yeah, feel like yeah, they have a safe right, place that right, they can go, right. a place where when they walk through the door, they feel accepted and loved. Mm -hmm. And so this, after, this year, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll have kids from both the middle school and Maplewood come in, and I'm able to partner, use the Haven. So one aspect of it is that, that substance prevention. Right. So we'll use curriculum that's evidence-based yeah. and right, we'll sure. be able to use mm -hmm. that. And then the other part of it is we'll be able to bring in, like, Carol McQueen on Thursdays, oh, and yeah. she's going to help that's us awesome. make preserves with elementary kids. That's awesome, and, and so that's Yeah, yeah. Chief Carol. That's gonna, it's just going to be fun. Right. And so the Haven gets to do that, and we did something similar last year with Meridian youth, so kids awesome. that receive services through Meridian. We were, were able to bring them in on Thursday evenings and then do curriculum and education, uh, you know, with fun, like, you know, throwing right. balls and, and playing games. But, and so that's, that's another aspect of the Haven that's, because we have that space, we're able to use that right. to start building a community and, and um, have parent programs as well. Yeah. And Well, it's, it's perfectly located right behind Frazee, mm -hmm. close to the high school. I mean, it is a perfect location. You talked about sustainability, that you have to um, – uh, you know, rent out. Can anybody donate? Can anybody uh, donate to the Haven? Absolutely. And actually for the last, I don't know, six or eight months, I've really been pushing it because mm -hmm. when we acquired the building, so when the building, um, we, we started using it, the roof, it would literally rain inside. Oh. It had not been maintained yeah. well. Uh, basically, the city owns the building. I'll just mm -hmm. I'll map it out. The city yeah. owns it. Yeah. Whoever rents this, the building from the city to manage is responsible for all the maintenance and upkeep. Yeah. And, and so basically, it, for several years, there's not been enough revenue, like in, in whoever has been in charge right. of that building, to cover maintenance of it. Mm -hmm. And so when we came in, we said we're not going to live in fear. Uh, right. Yes, the city owns it, but we're responsible for leaving it better than right. we find it for right. however little or however long. We get to use it. And so the very first thing with, like, any building is you have to fix the roof. If right. you don't fix the roof, you don't, have a building. you don't have a building. And so thank you to Baptist Temple. Last Christmas they did a campaign, and a portion of their um, donations came in and went straight to us. And we were able to, with uh, the help of Curtis Privet, who is a local contractor, mm -hmm. put that roof on at cost. So, awesome. so we got a new roof. Um, we've had lots of, like, great partnership with Sherwin-Williams. Everything in the building has been painted. And so it look, if you walk into the building, it looks better. Okay. Now, behind the scenes, what you don't know is before we got the building, the air conditioning units had been stolen. Oh. And the um, f furnaces that are in the building are both very much aging. Mm -hmm. And so when we started getting estimates on what it would cost to put air conditioning back in the building, because obviously it gets hot and right, humid sure. in Indiana. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we, we, the number has climbed. <laughs> and so talk about living in fear or yeah. trying not to. So we, it stays warm this year. We didn't get, we weren't able to get right. the air conditioning in like we'd hoped. We have raised basically $4,100. That's awesome. And with all of that to say, it's, it's more like eight to 10,000 that we need. Wow. And it's the community's building. So if someone would like to contribute to that, we would, would, would be, be grateful. Super grateful. <laughs> like, grateful just doesn't even seem You're right. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, I mean, right, I mean, right. be over the moon. Just yeah. because we, our desire is for our community to be able to come and be educated there right. and use it as a place to better ourselves. Right. So, for example, we've been in um, conversations with the NatCo Credit Union out of mm -hmm. Richmond that does classes um, through the Empowerment Center, mm -hmm. and so we would like to do some poverty education and simulation and 
honestly, we, with the sky's the limit, would right. love to see that building used yeah. basically Absolutely. all day, every day. Absolutely. Now, if somebody wants to donate their time, if someone wants to donate talent. Uh, their talent, if someone wants to just be involved, not necessarily monetarily, but obviously that, that, is, that is a key, how can they do that? How can they get involved with the Haven? Uh, let's say somebody's like, you know, hey, I'm good at uh, fixing something, I can do it. Plumbing. You know, to plumbing. Plumbing. Got we, we've got lots of plumbing and plumbers needs. Plumbers out there. Yeah, Luke's right at the camera. We have yeah. lots of plumbing needs. Plumbing needs. <laughs> the bathrooms have not been maintained in years. Yeah. Well, how can they get involved? Uh, sure. In they can contact me. My telephone number is 765-967-2584. I also have email, and that's ho it's Holly, H-O-L-L-Y, D as in Denver, at fspp.org. That's Family Services and Prevention Programs. Org, so FSPP .org. FSPP Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, if they want to rent the building, and I, I apologize that I don't have that number right on me <laughs> <laughs> before we looked it up, uh, Michelle Kelly at Calvary Baptist actually handles all yeah, of the, yeah. the booking. So if you want to rent it, uh, I know that we have, you know, a lot of community meetings are now taking place there. So our mm -hmm. drug coalition meets every first Friday of the month at the Haven. Uh, community Voices, the board meeting meets the first Thursday of the month there. And then I know there's a couple other retiree groups that are using the building. We would love that. So um, if it's anything educational or beneficial to the community, we try to do that for free. Mm -hmm. So like we'll do a drug take back day. The, I believe it's the, the f I should have looked on my calendar, but the first Saturday in October, yeah. that's happening at the Haven. Obviously we're not charging anybody for that. It's awesome. So awesome. it's a community me, center. Now what is drug take back day, what is that? Well, you know, it's it, it, basically prescription drugs that hang out mm -hmm. in a house are put put people at, at risk. Right. Uh, one, when they expire, they the medicines are no longer any good, right. and so it's not okay for our septic systems to throw right. them down the drain. Right. And it's also a temptation for you just never know who's going to be in your house. Exactly. Or, or and so it's it's best to get rid of them. And so at the the jail and at the police department, we have boxes that are fixed that are available anytime for anyone mm -hmm. to drop anything off in those. Now, we wanted to do a special day just as a, you know, put it out there that you can come in on right. a Saturday. Yeah. And then with it, we've paired with the health department and some local agencies to have a bit of an information fair is available right. as well. So right. that Saturday, uh, it's 9 to 1. You can come to the Haven, or better known as the Frazee Center, yeah. and drop off any unused prescriptions, uh, really honestly anything, and nobody's going to ask any questions. Sheriff Joey will be there along with some of his fellows and to make sure that nothing goes awry. You know, when I think of the word haven, I always think of something safe. You always know, safe haven, you know, put those two words together. Um, it's amazing how much of this, this thing has just blown up. It's amazing. It's for the betterment of the community, not just mm -hmm. our kids, but uh, you know, every, everyone in the community. You're expanding out future. You know, what, what, what's on the horizon for the Haven? Anything that you can mention now or, or that you're looking forward to? Well, we, I'm going to be honest. Last summer, I wanted to do summer programming. My mm -hmm. goal would be, I, I believe as a school corporation, all the elementary schools mm -hmm. will do their summer school at, at the Frazee Elementary. Mm -hmm. My desire is that the, those kids could come over to the Haven and participate in something similar to the Dis Discovery Program. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just so that we're getting kids that, for one reason or another, that are either behind or um, needing some extra attention to get caught yeah. up, yeah. giving them another boost of something in yeah. the summer to keep. Because they only go like a half day, don't they? On yeah, they only time? go till yeah. like, I think it's 1230. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's really two weeks, maybe three weeks of the summer. Yeah. It's not super long. Right. But I would like to grab a hold of those kids in the summer yeah. and do some programming at the Haven, yeah. and it, obviously it's super convenient, <laughs> you know, like we just right. walk them over. Right, and, exactly. And so that would be, that would be a future goal. Yeah. Uh, I would like, I, I'm a, you know, sometimes you're a little afraid to say it, but when well, you sure. say it, right. in Richmond they have a program called Circles, right. and it's really, a, I don't want to give it injustice in explaining right. it wrong, but, right. <laughs> but essentially it's, a, it's, it's helping people to bridge out of poverty, mm -hmm. not to steal Ruby Payne's dialogue, right. but basically you pair folks that are struggling or have struggled and then with with folks that have done maybe a little better in life like financially right. or made right. financial decisions that's helped them right. and then they meet for I believe it's 16 or 18 months oh, wow. on, on a regular basis and like fuel you know with fuel we feed them every Friday night right. like fuel you, they there's they share a meal and the person who is looking to um, kind of move 
upward or out of a poverty level, they actually facilitate it based on like a guided program. That's awesome. And it's called it's called Circle. So something in my heart is that that would be a program, uh, you know, available at the Haven. Right. It, it like fuel. <laughs> like right. Yeah. So fuel, fuel is one of those programs. I I couldn't do it alone. It could right. not be the Holly, right. Done thing. It, right. I can't. It, I have to have people to help me drive. I have right. to have people people that, that cook and are faithful about it, yeah. and uh, other people that are come just to be supportive. The Circles program is similar. You would have to have commitment from folks who would be willing to say every Tuesday or every whatever day for 18 months, right. I'm going to be committed to setting down with someone who really wants to, to, to shift their financial status, right. you know. Yeah. And so that is, that is something in my, in my heart. I know that it's going to take probably some of these littler classes with the NATCO right. folks to start building some interest and getting some people stepping forward and, and willing to serve in that capacity. So you, you, I mean, you, this, this, again, this thing is blowing up. When we meet in another three years, you have, no, I mean, no idea where it's going to go. Again, it's led by God. Obviously, that's the first and foremost. You talked about your, your position that you're currently doing now, mm -hmm. your day job, as mm -hmm. you like to call it, and you said it kind of fits your ministry. Let's talk about that a little bit and tell me exactly what you do with your, with your uh, day job. Okay, I love my day job. It couldn't, I, I have had probably the biggest criticism, people who don't, know right. that I'm not, you know, like, when I left the school, it was a, it was a, just, it was a Jesus decision. Right, right. I, I had gotten to the point where you can only hear about bad things for so much before you have to do something to prevent right. them. Right, And so my job was like a hand in glove right. in that I'm able to, I was able to spend a lot of time kind of almost in a university setting in right. that it's every training, every webinar and right. whatnot that has anything to do with substance abuse prevention Right. Um, the dynamics on the family, like over the last really two and a half years, I, I'm privy to go to that. Like I've, right. I've been able to go to Washington, D.C. and sat down with, with crazy powerful people and talk about right. where drugs are coming into the United States right. and, and what are we doing to, to prevent it. So that when I sat down with people like Ronnie Wiley, who right. has a platform right. to you know, talk to people, that I can, I can help you know the latest trends right. and know that information. And, and so... So my job is really at least two or three parts. One is public education. Right. So some, some counties or communities would call me a public health person. Right. And so we collect all the data from the Indiana Youth Survey, so all of our students that are mm -hmm. in 8th in, um, grade, 7th, 8th, well, really any grade, they, they provide data to us. And then we're able to strategically look and say, oh, wow. Like, for example, and uh, I'm always very careful when I share it because I don't want anybody to take it the wrong way. But the data last year shifts says that girls are using three times as much as boys. Yeah. And so that we're able to take that information and then say, okay, next year when we plan out what, what it is that we're going to do for the next year, right. we're going to target girls. Right. Because obviously we see a trend in the jail that right. there's 40 women in the jail, and that's never, never right. been before. Right. But you also look at the data and see three times as many girls using than boys. Right. It, yeah. It's a predictor. So my job is to look at that data and that information and then partner with some other folks that have, you know, done evidence-based programming right. and find the program. It's like a prescription. Like, you're sick, mm -hmm. and you, we go through and get the diagnostics, and then there's the, the medicine or the prescription. It's the, what you need to make you well. Right. And so with us, we're able to look at the data and know that, um, you know, dy dynamics in the home are shaky commitment to school right. so like right. being like committed to I will graduate right. is shaky and that um, we use drugs at a higher rate than elsewhere but we don't see the harm in that right. it's like we we've hit we've hit for years that smoking is bad for you right. but somehow the perception is that marijuana is good for you right exactly yeah and reality yeah. is well that's You're a buzz smoking. it's a buzz topic <laughs> it has all of the same like dangerous right. to your lungs, right. it shortens your IQ, and they know it, they've tested it. And so I'm able to take that information and then right. come in and, and provide programming. And, and a lot of times it goes back to it will never happen to me. Right. I especially am in teenagers. Yeah, especially teenagers. It never happened to me. I'm in total control, and, and we know that's not true. So you're digging deep into the heart of what causes it, where it's coming from, and why it's happening. Mm -hmm. And, again, that's the key to treatment, I believe, is to find out what, what causes your use. We can lock somebody up for 30 mm -hmm. days not keep them away from drugs they won't use. But when they get up, they get right back into that environment, boom, they're using it again. We've seen it over and over again. It's stopping the repeat 
you know, let's make, when, when I was working at the treatment center, I would always tell everybody, let's make this the last time that you've done rehab. Let's make this the last time. What was the difference before? And let's change that. And so you're doing that. And it's, you're living your heart. Yes, I am. Is basically what you're doing. And, and, you know, like with that, I get to go be a part of, like, there's a, a meeting regularly at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Which they're doing big things. Right. $10 million to go towards specifically um, mm -hmm. detoxing. Mm -hmm. And so then with that in the pipeline for next year, we need to know, okay, so once people spend, you know, three to eight days detoxing, where mm -hmm. are we going to put them for treatment? Exactly, yeah. And yeah. so. Wish we had one here. On the, yeah, and, and we do with House of Ruth and One Site right. Ministries, but they're, they're not enough. Right. They're doing great things, but we're yeah. going to need more. And so yeah. part of my, my job is then partnering with the community and doing whatever we can to support, you know, whatever it is that we're going to need. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is, oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, you know, one of the biggest things that we're doing with my job right now, and I just don't want to forget it because I, I want to say it, <laughs> you know, is, is basically if you believe that everybody uses drugs, so if you believe that everybody's smoking or everybody mm -hmm. is um, drinking, you're more likely to do it. Right. Right. So Fayette County has had this reputation of, that we use drugs. Oh, yeah, that we're just drug heads. Right. And so then when the kids look at, answer the questions on the survey, they, they believe that everybody's, that everybody's doing it. Yeah. Right. So, like, when in reality, and I don't want to throw numbers because I, I don't have the, right. the right numbers in my head today, but when it's like 20-some percent are and 70, they believe 70-some percent are, right. then it increases their chance of doing it. Right. So one of the big things that we're doing that actually really works. counter that. Yeah, works well with Channel 3 and where we're at today is just a social norming campaign right. that, you know, really most Fayette County students really don't use right. drugs. Right. And so last year we launched Be Your Own Kind of Superhero. Right. Oh, meaning yeah. like, you know, what, what does a superhero look like? And then it, we paired right. it with the curriculum that the officers are doing in the school. And then this year we've, we've added Be Your Own Kind of Superhero, Be the Best You Can Be, right. Be Drug Free. Right. And it's just that that continuum of believing that we don't, you know, do, not all of us do right. drugs. I don't, right. I've, don't misuse drugs, yeah. you know, and so. I've been sober 46 years. All right. Yeah. So, right? Like, yeah, we, right. Yeah. It's, it's the only preventable mental illness. Yeah, if exactly. You I agree with ever, that. If you never do it, yeah. then yeah. you'll never have to, I agree to deal with, with it. I agree with that. And so, anyway, that's my day job, and, and it's a hand in glove. Like, I get yeah. to work at the, with sad students, I get to work, um, that's Students Against Destructive Decisions. Right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was gonna say. <laughs> I, I get to work in the, in the middle school with some kids that we've identified, and again, with Maplewood kids this year, and then for the first time ever, they let yeah. me count fuel on my timesheet. Oh, that's awesome. And so I, it, is, it is something that I, it is my passion, but it also fits. Yeah, like it, I said, you're living your heart. Right. You know, it's, it's sad, I always thought with Students Against Drug Driving. Mm -hmm. It changed names. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it, it's once it was, it, yeah. it started out with MAD, and then it went to, which was Mothers Against Drunk Driving yeah, and Students yeah. Against Drunk Driving. Now it's Destructive Decisions, which includes, like, um, self-harm and right. a lot of other areas. Yeah, so um, you have another job. I do. Uh, you are an elected official. Mm -hmm. uh, last time you ran for mayor, first woman to run for mayor uh, in history of Fayette County, so you got that going for you. Um, but you ran for city council or county, county council. council. Sorry, county council this time. Tell us about that. I mean, was it everything you expected, and if not, was it more than you expected? I mean, tell me all about it. Well, you know, I'll tell you um, the difference between, and I'm just going to be real because I've never been anything but real. Right, yeah. And that is You're that not a politician. I'm not a politician. I care about Connorsville. And yeah. when I made the, the decision to buy a house in Connorsville, yeah. I made a decision for this to be my home. Right. So whether I'm an elected official or not, I want to do the very best I can to support the people who are. Mm -hmm. And so um, for me, when I decided to run for county council. It, it was a huge decision mm -hmm. because running for mayor was hard. I mean, I'm looking at the camera and I'm just gonna tell you, if you run for something, it's hard. It's it is. People, people who love you won't look at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people who have like been your friend forever, suddenly it's like you're a leper. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm the same person. Right. You know, and then I also, you know, running, I, I, I feel like, I've shifted my dialogue instead of saying, when I ran for mayor yeah. two years ago, <laughs> because right. I, I don't want to the rest of my life to be say yeah. when yeah. I ran for mayor right. and lost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But anyway, with that said, it, you just have to really put yourself out there and, mm -hmm. and be um, willing to be criticized for everything. Right. And people who um, don't know you are quick to 
presume things about you. Right. And, you know, I, recently I've, the new one I've been hearing is, Hollywood's not the same. I and, don't see that. <laughs> okay. Well, I said, you know, like I, I, I do an analogy. Maybe you're better. Well, I don't know. I do an analogy with a boat. And I, you can only put so much in the boat before it starts to sink. Mm. And so you have to pull back on some things right. in, order to, sure. in order to stay afloat. Yeah. Right. And, or you have to distribute the weight. And so for right. me, where I'm at is, you know, obviously I have a full-time job. I have full-time county, well, county yeah. council. Yeah. And then, you know, with running, yeah, with running the Haven and, like, serving Jesus, it, it means I get to, and I love it. I don't ever want to say no to Sunday mornings. Like, but if, if somebody asks me to come on a Sunday morning and present or speak, I always want to be available to right. that. Right. And so, uh, yes, I'm probably not at as many public events as I, I once mm. was, but I've added two other, other really big yeah. things to my life. And yeah. I, I still love Jesus. I still of want to course. serve our community. And, right. and obviously, I love county council. I love it. I didn't ant anticipate, because it's, it's, it's such the financial entity right. of the community, I mean, of the county. Mm. And I didn't know that I would like it as I'm much. Glad you, did. you know what I mean? Like, right. I, I like to problem solve. Yeah. This is a different kind of problem solving. You know, we talked about it. You're not from here, from Ohio. Same with me. Uh, we were in college. You went to Denver. You could have went anywhere. And, and, and that's why when you made that phone call to me and said, hey, I'm here in Connersville. And I remember you asked me to pray for you on your, your, your job at the high school. Remember that? And, and, and I was so happy for you. I guess the question I want to ask is, you, you, you want to make Connersville better, but you're not from here. Why? I think Connorsville has some of the greatest people. I think so too. And um, but at the because end you hear kids say, "Oh, this place is terrible. I want to move out. I can't wait to turn 18. I'm out of here." You hear that? I will also say that I cannot say it separate. It, it's that it's a calling, and I, I may have shared this with you before, yeah. but I. Uh, with 21st Century Scholars, which was the program yeah. that mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. first came back to town That's with. That's right. Yes, that's right. When I first came back to town, was with 21st Century Scholars and was doing an event in our park. And actually, there was a, a weekend like where we were going to Franklin College or something like mm -hmm. that. And I remember getting out of my car or going, getting, walking out of a house where there had been a, it was just a mattress and an extension cord from the neighbors. And they were sitting on this mattress in their living room, charging their cell phone with the neighbor's electricity. And I remember specifically sitting in my car and feeling more compelled than ever that this was the mission ground that God had called me to. And, and I mean, my whole life, so at 19 I went to the Philippines and since that time have been, you know, all over the world. But that day getting in my car after leaving that family's home, it was just really, really clear you know. that this is where I needed to be and where while I may have a lot of student loan debt and a lot of education, <laughs> um, this is where I felt like my education could be most effective, yeah. where the gifts and talents that God had given me could be used most, you know, vivaciously. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this, oh, this was absolutely. it. And so, yeah, Connorsville is a mission. And if you come to my house, I have a, a shelf, you know, with both my parents have passed away, and it's kind of like a little bit of trinkets. But it's trinkets from all over the world. And last year, I, I bought a Christmas ornament that said home, and the O was a heart, and it had Indiana in it. And so while I was born and raised in oh, Ohio yeah, man, and a missionary um, throughout the world, uh, Connorsville's the mission ground that I call home. Amazing. Amazing that God brought you here to do wonderful things. And it's almost a tragedy that... Um, that, that we need these services, but thank God that we have them. Right. Thank God we have them. We've got about a minute to go, Holly, before we wrap this up. You know, I tell you, we can probably have you on next month and the month after yeah. that. So much information, so much positivity. Any final words you would like to add to the people of Connorsville who have supported the Haven and people that may want to support? You know, I would say, obviously, financially, we are always in need. And um, so I, I, one, compel you that if there's some money set aside that you would like to use to invest back in the community, the people like to do programming. I can find dollars a lot of times for that. I don't necessarily find building money sitting around real easy. Right. And so, so if you'd like to help us with the heating and air, please do get in contact with me. And then uh, every Friday night, 9 to midnight, I think that the biggest thing that has happened is that people come and they're changed. It's, they come with the intent to serve kids, but they grow themselves. So come out on a Friday night and see what we're about. Come on out Friday night, see this lady, help support the ministry. She's doing wonderful things for this community. God bless you. We're glad to have you. Holly Dunn on the spot. We'll see you next month. Thanks.